Great stuff. Oh, Sandy, Sandy, how are you doing? <laughs> At least today you're on this show. Great to see you here. Thank you all so much, um, everybody else that's just tuning in there. I think Robert is on there as well. And I hope um, you can hear me loud and clear. I contracted a cold yesterday where I was, so proof positive I shouldn't leave my office. Every time I leave my office, I come back sick. So, <laughs> and it's a good thing we can't spread germs over the over the, 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 the phone, so you can't catch my cold. But I'm hoping yesterday everybody had a bit of a break from the lunch and learn. I was out, uh, you know, doing field stuff. We're creating a show um, that we're going to be presenting to, um, you know, a local channel here, uh, ABC channel. So we were working with um, a couple of celebrity friends of mine and also uh, other, you know, actors and uh, people that are creating this show together. So I'm really, really excited that probably you guys are going to be the first people to watch it and see it. And um, it's all part of uh, the stuff that I do with um, the media and the digital marketing aspects. My name is Prosper Taruvinga, by the way. If this is the first time you're actually tuning into the Lunch and Learn, you're probably wondering, who is this guy? He just goes on and rumbles about stuff that we don't even understand. Well, my passion basically is to help uh, business owners like yourself to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I also believe that if you've got a business um, that you're you know, running for yourself, you should be able to create for and relate to those you're going to be demanding money off of. And today we're going to be dwelling on that precise aspect of creating for and actually relating to the people you're going to be demanding money off of. So uh, in all essence, I do teach a four-step system that helps you capture the right kind of leads, uh, create content for your customers, and um, you then convert those people into paying customers and you connect with them um, so they can give you referrals and you can get business from them continuously, all right? So I essentially help businesses like yours, um, you know, to earn more money with less struggle. Now, Robert says, yes, indeed. Um, keeping our germs to ourselves is big plus for video conferencing. Oh, <laughs> great stuff. And uh, Abdul says, I'm happy I can attend one more of your lessons. Thank you so much for tuning in. Alison, cheers. Hope you're having a fantastic um, day or week, wherever you are right now. So, I mean, obviously, um, please just type in um, the, the, the comment section there. I really want you to help me with this show because maybe I might just duck in and blow my nose or something like that, but I want the show to go on. Can you just type in, what is the main reason that you actually market your business? Why do you market your business? Can you let me know why you market your business? Um, I mean, there's Abdul, there's Alison there. I just really need to know what is the purpose or what is the purpose of you doing Facebook ads? What's the point of you having that website? Um, what's the point of you even sitting on this show right now? Why do you actually even bother getting people to know about your business? Why do you market your business? I just need to know, just so that I have an understanding of what your understanding for marketing is, okay? Because if you ask me any given moment, marketing basically is making sure that your cash register or your bank account is always ringing, ringing louder and more often, all right? So it's not about you going about doing the best ad out there, you doing the best trick or the best hack. Um, it's really, really to serve your clients, to make a huge difference. Oh, Travis, I'm not reading what you're saying, but it actually resonates with what I'm saying. Serve your clients, make a huge difference while enjoying stress-free abundance. Absolutely, all right? Um, and you wanna excuse me, um, I have a cold, so I might just duck in and out to blow my nose, so just hang in there, guys. Uh, all right, so this is what I'm talking about, right? Where the goal for every online business or you know, every digital entrepreneur is to get more clients um, so that you can serve them, so that you can also have abundance within yourself, so that you can generate more revenue and so you can grow your online business, all right? So we're getting to the end of the year right now. 
and we're starting yet another new year. Some of us may have not grown as much in 2017 and are hoping to grow in 2018. All right. And um, I assume that this is maybe your goal that you want to achieve in your business. And that's probably why you're here. And that's probably why you're sort of marketing. You know what I mean? But how are you going to achieve that goal? And what is it that you should possibly do in order for you to scale and grow your business? Do you need to be getting in new customers or do you need to be making sure that your services are working in order to serve the customers that come through uh, to your business? Can you let me know what is really, really important right now for your business? Do you need to get more influx of customers or do you actually really need to make sure your back end, your services are going to be serving those customers as soon as they come in? Let me know because either way, the majority of the answers would determine how this show is going to go. Now, Sandy says, to gain exposure for the business, which will in turn get me clients that I will serve and will fuel my financial abundance. Absolutely. We're doing this, first of all, to be of service because we're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. And all the times that we are putting work out there, we really want to serve other people and serve ourselves in the process. Because you can't do well if you cannot feel well. You can't give off of what you don't have. So you need that abundance right from the start. And Travis says both serve well to attract referrals. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for tuning in, Travis. Um, I mean, obviously, I really hope you're not going to catch my cold, but I hope you're going to catch my drift. All right. So this is what I'm trying to say. All you need right now, obviously, is maybe some actionable digital marketing strategies that will actually work, that are probably proven, and that will get you results. But if you are not aware of what it is that you seek out to get, if you are not certain what it is that you really, really, really want to get, you will be hyped by a sales pitch or a presentation. How many times have you been hyped by a sales pitch or a presentation and you purchased a course from a marketer or from a guru and um, you, know, you were thinking it was going to change your business, but nothing actually happened? You know? Um... And uh, Sandy says, from my financial abundance, I can go and turn and serve others. Absolutely. Because you can't, you can't serve others if you've got nothing off of yourself to give. All right? So this is the way this show is going to go now. We're going to be talking about, um, a lot of people are talking about, um, you know, how they can get more leads and customers, but they're not actually growing within their own business. I mean, obviously, it's easy for you to bring customers to your shop. But sometimes it's hard for them to make the purchase and sometimes it's even more difficult. You know why? Because we don't have the system or the capacity to actually serve those people. And it's time to actually start looking at a different approach. You know why? Because now you're just stuck in the process of you bringing in, bringing in customers. But as we all know, people do business with those that they know, like and trust. So if you are, you know, generating all that business, but people are not being satisfied what is going to happen? They're going to lose trust. You're going to lose that rapport that you've had with those people. And you're going to constantly be turning your wheels and, um, you know, trying to bring all those people. Why? Because some guru or some marketer told you that you need this sales trick in order to bring people in. Absolutely. You can invite people to a party. But if the people are vegetarian or if the people, um, you know, if, if the people are probably of a different sexual orientation, if the, 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 the majority of the other patron, patrons that are at the party, if they don't satisfy their sexual orientation, do you think people would stay? I don't think so. Do you think if people are vegetarian and you have a, a meat buffet, a meat platter, a meat eaters conference, do you think people would stay? No. Do you know what I mean? So you need to know what is behind the scenes in your business. Do you have the capacity? Do you have the customer care in place? Do you have the system to make sure that when the customer comes in? Because there's a whole notion out there in the market um, that says that when you have finished talking to a customer, you have closed the deal. I refuse to accept that notion. You're actually opening up a relationship with that customer because now you're going to serve them now you're going to be offering them your services you know so if you're growing your business you would know that you really need to change the way you're doing your business um otherwise nothing is going to happen in terms of growth good day charlie how's it going and nicole thank you so much for tuning in you know 
So if you're out there trying to grow your business, you will basically have to look at what's happening behind the scenes. As soon as you open the relationship with that customer, how are they being treated? How is the welcome pack looking like? Is it, is it still aligned to what brought them to us in the first place? I don't want to lie to you. If you look into, if you look at my library, yeah, I've bought many books. I've bought many courses. Some of them, I've simply done nothing with them. Some of the courses are gathering dust in the shelves there. And some courses are also gathering digital dust in my hard drive. You know? And that's, that's the case with a lot of people. I mean, I don't even watch, watch them or even read the material. Literally do nothing with it. Because it was just the hype that was sold at that particular moment. But it's not what my business actually needs at that time. You know? I know right now I have maybe um, courses that I bought three, four, five years ago. I scrapped together all the money when I didn't even have the money that I could even afford to buy it. And they're still sitting in my shelf, gathering and collecting dust. Never opened. Can you, can you relate to that? You know? Half of the time, it's not our fault. Half of the time, it's the fault of the seller who is just trying to make a quick buck, but then does not have a follow-up process for people to actually integrate and actually utilize that commodity or that product. And guess what happens? People will come back for a refund because they are not seeing the value in what you've sold them. Now, what is the benefit of you gathering all these people to come and purchase from you? You know? Uh, to, to come and purchase from you and eventually have to give them refunds anyway. You know? So, are you actually selling what people really need? Or are you actually putting out the, 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 the content? Or are you actually putting out services that people actually want? You know, as bad as buying information product and not using it, that's not the real problem. You see, the real problem is most of us are buying the wrong products the wrong services and the wrong coaching because, you know, we, we assume we know what we actually need to grow our differences, but it's two different things. Do you just want to get leads in or do you actually want to serve those people as soon as they come in? You know? Charlie says, I'll, I'll pass by later on and, and I, will, I will take them off your hands. Please do. There's a whole lot of stuff and books that I haven't even touched yet, you know, because the person who sold them to me did not integrate the, the part when we opened the relationship to the part where I need to use their product. So if I was maybe in Family Feud, I don't know if you know the show that I'm talking about, Family Feud, um, and if a question came up and said, what does every small business owner want more of? You know what the question, the, the answer would be? I would answer, they want more sales, they want more leads, which is what we think we want. But it's easier to serve a customer who's already known you, who's already purchased from you, than to go out there and search for a new customer. So that will be likely what it is that you think your business needs right now. You think you need more sales, more leads. But you know what? In every small business, nearly every small business um, owner is going to tell you that they need more leads. And they're not lying. You know, Steve Thompson says, I want to serve, I want to love them so much. My clients are oh, definitely. And you're doing an amazing job for that. Thank you so much, Steve. And why do you think so many businesses and so many companies that, you know, they sell you products, right? And their services and, and they go out and, 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 and they still want you know, to get you more leads or more sales. You know what the problem is? Depending on whatever stage your business is in or whatever stage you're in in your business right now, you may, you may yes, you may think I really need more customers in order to grow or in order to be, um, you know, um, uh, whatever it is that you, you guys were talking about earlier on, the abundance and to be able to serve. But I found that the opposite is true. You know, you actually need fewer leads because if you're going to be churning and burning those leads and you don't have the capacity to take on new business, then what's the point in you dis disappointing more people? You know, 
You have to look after the ones that you have so much because if somebody has made a purchase from you, they're going to buy again from you. If you've got all them, you know, if you've got a back end that supports them to be, to be, to be a continued customer. Unless maybe your, your, your product is, um, you know, used and discarded and people don't need it anymore. There is a hole in your bucket. You are going to carry water from the ocean with a bucket full of holes. Yes, you can get the customers, but you're letting them go by maybe you're not being good with your customer care, your service procedure is not well, or you're not actually delivering the service that you promised your clients to get. You know? So, you know, that, that guru or that product or that coach or, or that course that you may have purchased, <clears throat> they're just selling you what you asked for, which is right now more leads and more sales. But there's so much more to running a company than getting leads and sales. You're going to need the capacity to service those people. You're going to need the systems, the processes, the management, the customer service, the quality control. And the list goes on and on and on and on. Are you the right kind of person to actually serve those clients that you're paying Facebook to bring you uh, leads through your Facebook ads? You know? So when you do get those leads, I mean, hopefully you convert them into sales and, and they pay you the money and the sales will only stick if your business can deliver to that particular customer. Nothing more, nothing less. If you can't service a customer, what's the reason for them to stick around? You know, I want to sh share with you a, a funny example. Um, at the beginning of the year when I was expanding in January, do you know what I mean? I, this is something that has happened within our business. There's a company that sold me a software that is worth $6,000. All right. So they made a $6,000 sale. So we bought it, I think it was February, March, and it was delivered in April. All right. Nice. Everything was working. And then we started training, um, you know, in April, May, we started training how to use that uh, software. And up until now, the software is not even set up. It doesn't even work. And I'm actually now wanting a refund. So what was the point in them closing that sale when they don't have the capacity to, to train um, you know, me to actually utilize the service and to actually train my whole team to utilize that service? You know? So even if they made 100 sales, say in the last uh, six or seven months, from my point of view, Simply, they don't have the systems and the processes to handle my account. How many other people are complaining behind, behind them there? Do you think that's a good business to run? Yes, you might be doing $6,000 sales, but are you actually delivering? Are you actually fulfilling those customers? Have you ever had something like this happen to your business? That somebody sells you something and um, you know you... You know, you, you can't even utilize the thing. And when you try and ring them, the service is just kaput. What would you do? Do you look into the reason, you know, why you should be getting them to enjoy your money? Or would you actually just go out and seek for um, a, 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 a refund? Would you blame the customer then if they come and seek a refund just because your systems are not in place? So here's the moment, here's the time to actually do an honest analysis. You know, I had a customer who came to me and said, hey, listen, I want to do a Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale. And I was like, where were you the rest of the year? I don't trust your systems. What if we put in a good campaign and then your, your system is not going to be able to cater for all those people? Come back next year. Because us as, as business people, we tend to want to blame the customer. Just like what this other company that sold me this software did. Because I asked them for a return. I was like, listen, man, we, we've, we've tried. And none of you guys are forthcoming because all you wanted was the sale. But now you're not even letting us use the product. You know? And me as a marketer, I started questioning, you know. I wrote them an email and I was like, where did this go wrong? I thought you guys were, were all on the case trying to get me to be your customer. Now nobody even picks up their phone or nobody even um, answers their emails. And you know what the CEO told me? Oh, sorry, our employees have not been responding to emails. Well, guess what? I have a system that logs every single email that comes into my space. You know why? Because I want to be accountable for the work that I put out there. 
So I went in and I looked and I pulled out every email in correspondence that I did with that company. Every email that was ever sent to me up until I made the $6,000 payment. You know, and I was able to show them, you know, how we responded and how they were responding and how they were, you know, justifying how everything is going to work and how they were going to teach us, etc., etc. So once I showed the CEO those email responses, guess what she said? She's like, oh, it seems like that wasn't the issue. Um, you know, um, you know I, I can't quite figure it out. Let us investigate. They told me they're going to have a look into it, you know, and then they were going to get back to me. And still, I'm waiting for an answer. So can you imagine if you're the service provider? Yes, we want to make the sales, but do we have the capacity to, um, you know, service those clients as soon as they come knocking on our doors? Do you know what I mean? I can't tell you what this, uh, this company's exact problem is, it, but it wasn't sales. They made the sale. They made the $6,000 sale. And guess what? After the $6,000, it was going to be, I think, $1,200, between $800 and $1,200 monthly that I was going to pay as a renewal for using that software. Now, can you imagine how much money they've lost just because they were, not in, they were being incompetent? So the problem was not for them to get leads. They got me as a lead. The problem is not to get sales. They got this sale from me. They are just incompetent in their back end. So it's not you going out there searching for new customers or searching for new leads all the time. You gotta have the capacity to service those people once they knock on your door. Now look at the bad vibe that they're getting right now. Can you imagine if I was telling you to go and purchase that, that software, how many more customers would they be getting? Just because they're incompetent, just because their systems were not in place, and now they now lost also a recurring fee from my services that I would have been paying. So they need to fix their customer maintenance and service systems, not more sales. Anyone can make somebody buy something, but do you have the stick to itiveness or the customer retention in order for that customer to actually enjoy using that service they've purchased from you? So as you're going to be scaling up, you know, essentially, a lot of people, it's going to be January. You're going to be putting out your uh, New Year's resolutions. You know, you're going to want a million dollars in revenue or whatever six figures you lying to yourself about. Most of the time, you really got to focus on your time, money and effort and making sure you're providing a service that customers are actually going to rave about instead of you putting out re, um, review, I mean, um, uh, putting out refunds and, and getting bad reviews from customers out there because you can't walk back from a bad review especially one that is given by me because i will take my time and make sure i write a half a page with pictures illustrations everything else that comes along with it how are you going to escape that one so it's not the leads it's not the sales that you want you know so as you're trying to grow next in the next year or so, your business will ultimately slide back if your capacity cannot handle the customers that you're reaching out to. Make sure you can serve the bad in hand instead of the one that is out there flying out there. Huh? So if you're currently stuck in the in the whole cycle of you know getting more leads, getting more leads, getting more leads, and they're just escape you or you don't know how um, you know to handle them just make sure all your systems your website everything is all you know you know helping your customer to make it an easier transaction for them you know it's really time to stop chasing leads and really start working on your business figure out what areas do you really need to 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 do that that you need help in and source out and outsource um, you know, to, to, to people that are competent within those areas. Because once you figure it out, you can fix it and your sales will then soar. And then you don't have to deal with a lot more customers because it's, it's painful. I've dealt with an, an overspill of customers because some people are just there because you're offering a discount or some people are just there because your sales letter was good, but they don't actually have a need for your service. So you want to make sure you're serving clients that really want what you have to offer. Don't just go out there and pull people just because you've got a service and they've got a credit card. 
you know, have the diligence and the duty of care, you know, to know that this person, yes, of course they can afford my course, but do they really need it? Of course they can afford my product, but do they really need it? Am I really willing and able to serve them? Because once you open the relationship, because it's not about closing, you are opening a relationship with that person. You're going to be giving them your time, your energy, your effort. So it better be somebody that you actually like. You know, so it's not just about pulling in the leads or sales or whatever it is. I know that's what we're all here for. But at the end of the day, you really got to make sure, are these the kind of people that I want to serve? You know? So I created something um, of an avatar of the kind of client that I want to serve. And, um, you know, you, I speak it into existence all the time. Then you become attractive to your perfect customer. Because at the end of the day, you as the person that is, um, you know, a business owner, you are like a lighthouse that customers are searching and they're the little boats that are looking for where shore is. So you got to be anchored. All right. Make sure you've got all the things when you invite your customers in to, um, you know, to your place or you invite them to a party. You've got all the nibbles for them to nibble onto so that they're not going to think of going anywhere else and give somebody else their service. Because what's the point in you frustrating people that would have just been, you know, minding their own business out there? So you want to fix that hole in your bucket. Yes, you are bringing in the customers. Good on you. But are you serving them? Are you connecting with them? And once you've got them all connected, why don't you let them connect within themselves? Because once they start working together, you know what I mean? You know what happens? Then you become that anchor that they actually need. Lisa, thank you so much. I hope um, you saw your video. It was so good having you on the show yesterday. Absolutely fantastic. And you say that thank you for sharing Prosper. The information resonates with appreciation and gratitude. Well, thank you so much uh, for tuning in as well. Thank you so much. All right. So if there's anything that I can help you out with, obviously, yes, you're getting the leads, you're getting the sales, but are your systems flowing in as much as your customers know that they can book a time with you, they can book in your calendar, it's all just fluid. Because if you make it harder for them to make the transaction, it will be harder for them to release their cash for the next um, money. Wouldn't you rather have continued customers instead of you every single day going out there looking for new leads, new, looking for new customers? Serve the ones that you have right now. Make sure that they have everything that you, 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 you promised them. And more. Over deliver so that they come back and they bring their friends, their relatives, and then they can refer your work. And all of a sudden, you actually don't even need to market anymore. I really hope that you're going to succeed in your business. I really want that, you know, whatever you are going to be doing out there, you're going to be serving and creating for the people you're going to be demanding money off of. All right. You got to optimize your business for growth and for profit. All right. And I want to help you build those systems so that you can start operating your, your business on autopilot because we can't be doing all of these things by ourselves. I want to help you generate those leads and more revenue from the people you already have within your business instead of you going out and searching for new customers because it's expensive. You know, it's much more cheaper to convert a customer you already have than to get a new customer to convert them to your way of thinking. So if you're tuning in for the first time, thank you so much. Let me know what your business is and how I can be able to help you. In the meantime, thank you, thank you. And if you really like this show and you've watched it this far, please share this. Okay, please share this. Maybe somebody really needed to hear this. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day.